just put your car in neutral, let the earth rotate. All right, yeah, it's all good. Now really, you guys are so nice. You guys are so nice, but most of you have never heard of me, have you? Seriously. Let's be real, you haven't. I, I, I've been doing this 30 years, and, and, but somebody gave me for my birthday a book. It's never too late, you're never too old. 50 people who found success after 50. That's 50 people out of 7.5 billion people in the world who found success after 50, all right? That's one out of every 150 million people who found success after 50, all right? That'd be one or two in the entire US of A. So if this goes really well, I might be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Digging it, I had a little, a bit of a hard time, a lot of traffic, of course, road construction. Really drives me crazy, it's always the same thing. 50 guys standing around, watching one person work. And who's that? The woman, <laughs> holding the sign, it says, slow men working, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is what you do in bumper to bumper traffic. This is an LA trick, but it works anywhere you go. Just put your car in neutral, let the earth rotate. All right, yeah, it's all good. It, and it never fails. You're in bumper to bumper traffic, you're stressed, you, you put some music on to try to relieve the, the pain a little. And here, it, and I'm always parked right next to this, the loud car stereo guy. There he is. And this is supposed to attract women. Like what kind of women? Women with heart murmurs maybe, right? Matt, Match that arrhythmic beat. <laughs> Their cars look really nice though. Here's my theory, all this <laughs> pounds out the dents from the inside. <laughs> you know what, I bet if you had one of those, you'd never get a kidney stone. <laughs> so that's a, yeah. I wanted to get my windows tinted and it's so expensive. I, I couldn't afford it, you know what I did instead? I bought a box of fruit roll-ups. <laughs> Shade the day snack at night, right, friends? <laughs> you guys are so nice. This is so cool. You're, you're real. I like that about you. I love that about you. You know, I live in LA. I did a show in Beverly Hills last week. Couple in the front row, so much plastic surgery, their faces were being held back by a chip clip. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. How many baby boomers do we have in the room here tonight? Be proud, keep those hands up, because we're the coolest people here. I'll tell you why we're so cool, because we're in our second round of bell bottoms, everybody. That's right, yeah. Now, if you're younger than us, I'm gonna give you your props right now. You are better looking than us. I know, I hate to admit it, but seriously, every generation gets better looking than the one before. And if you don't believe me, find a picture of your great, great, great granddad. <laughs> But man, we totally have you on the cool. We had, we had long hair first, we had short hair first, we had no hair first. <laughs> Brightly colored hair, we had it too. We called them clowns. <laughs> what about the saggy pants? The saggy pants, we had them too. We called them diapers. <laughs> yeah. How about the piercings the kids have? Yeah, the piercing, we had piercings too. We called them metal shop accidents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> tattoos, come on, tattoos, be real. That is so World War II. Yeah. Some of you hipsters still don't think we're cool. Right, boomers, they still don't think we're cool. You know how cool we are? We got to ride in the front seat of the car when we were kids. That's right. Matter of fact, we stood up in the front seat of the car when we were kids, didn't we? No seat belt, just mom's arm. That's all we needed, right? Ah, oh, fun. Now, let's see. I still think that are you kind of getting that they still don't think we're cool? You know how cool we are? We went to the first Rolling Stones farewell tour. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of don't get the generation. I, I mean, I think you guys are awesome, you're cool, but I don't get like, who's somebody you look up to? Little Wayne? Little Wayne, really? Little Wayne, poquito bonito. We had John Wayne, everybody. All right. That's right. Hipster, do you know what shag carpet is? You two hipsters right there. Do you know what shag carpet is? It was carpet that was this tall, right, boomers? 
Yeah, and it was uglier. The uglier, the better. Am I right? Absolutely. Our family had the brown and the orange and the yellow, and the yellow all mixed up into one. If you had that color, it meant at some point in time you were training a puppy. All right? <laughs> If there was a stain, you would shake it, it would drop down 10 feet in the spring corn grew, all right? Here was the thing, hipsters, you missed out on. We used to have to rake the shag, right? We had to rake the carpet, and it was never a good thing. It was like, get up there, rake the shag. We have company coming, get up there right now. So you start raking the shag, raking the shag, you're all sad. Did you ever rake yourself into a corner? This was a dilemma. Because you'd have to do it all over again if it wasn't standing up. So you, you step on the sofa, you step on the love seat, you step on that coffee table to get out of there, and accidentally you kicked over these fake plastic grapes. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, hipsters, you don't know what I'm talking about. They were these big grapes, clusters of uh, fake plastic grapes. They were the size of grapes that Joshua and Caleb brought back from the promised land, okay? They were really big. But they made the best toy out of, of, of all time, out of exactly the same material. <laughs> What are these, boomers, huh? Clackers, Clackers or click clacks? See? See hipsters, huh? See? What do these things cost, like 50 cents? What's an Xbox now, like $350? Look how cool this is, huh? Look how cool, look how cool. Am I right, am I, all right, am I right? Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. What, what? Remember when you would miss how much it would hurt? Oh, you'd go to school all bruised up. You know, the teacher would worry about you. And oh, could you imagine if these things came back today? It'd be a whole different world. There'd be click clack forearm guards and click clack goggles, click clack helmets. Pobrecito mijito, don't get hurt with your click clacks, oh yeah. Did you hear me speak Spanish there, friend? Did you hear that? That's because I'm Latino. That's right. My dad, Eulogio Nicasio Maestas. My, my grandma, on, on my, and my, my, my granddad on my dad's side, Candido Maestas. My grandma on my dad's side, Gravialita Sanchez, okay? My mom's side, Maria Feliz Barella. That's my mom. Her dad, Guillermo Barella. And her mom, Maria Murrieta. And I'm Nick Arnett, everybody. Yeah, how about that? My parents would speak Spanish all the time we were kids. We didn't know what they were talking about. We just figured they were Pentecostals. Yeah. Oh, I have a great family. I do. I just love my, my mom, when I was a kid, had a beehive hairdo, all right? And I'm not making this up. At night, she would wrap her hair in toilet paper to keep it in shape. Am I making it right? It was so embarrassing, but I'll tell you one thing. We used to love to go camping with my mom. Some of you are way ahead of me on this one. Yes. Hey, mom, it's an emergency. Can you roll over? I need a sheet there, yeah? There you go. She was cool. We'd take her out TP in houses. Come on, mom, spin faster, all right? One night, we started unwrapping my mom's hair. We got all the way to the center. No hair, just a cardboard tube. That was it, yes. I have four sisters, zero brothers. Two older sisters, two younger sisters, and if they ever cried, my dad ran in, she's crying now, you happy? <laughs> well, compared to her, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> we had a station wagon, no minivans in our era, right? Station wagon, three-seater. Yeah. Three in the front, three in the middle. I sat alone in the back seat. Which way did it face? Wow. Backwards, yes. All by myself, and my dad, so thoughtful, He'd roll down the back window about one inch, just enough so the poisonous fumes could roll back in on me. Yeah. Uh, remember your lunchbox? Did you have a cool lunchbox there, good man? Did you have a, a metal lunchbox, right? What, what was on the cover, you remember? Oh, you're the best. How about you, friend? Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Um. Six million, oh, so cool. I had, I had Donnie and Marie Osmond. Yeah, yeah. Thermos only held milk and prune juice. Yeah, yeah. Was your lunchbox made out of metal? Absolutely, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, metal was the best, right? Metal lunchboxes, you could slide it on the playground and it would spark. <laughs> if you had a cheese sandwich, you slide it, grilled cheese on the spot, right? Yes, yes. 
Oh, crazy. Now, it didn't matter what your lunchbox was made out of. If you had one banana in your lunchbox, your entire lunch tasted like a banana, right? <laughs> to this day, I have an incredible craving for bologna and banana sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. And then some days your mom put too much mayonnaise in your sandwich and your lettuce would turn clear. <laughs> I was the first kid in class with cabbage contacts. <laughs> then the hottest day of the year, some kid would inevitably bring an egg salad sandwich to school. And as soon as he unwrapped it, janitor was right there. <laughs> Thought somebody was sick. And pretty soon somebody was, right? Yeah. <laughs> what was the best store-bought dessert you could have in your lunchbox, friends? Twinkies. Twinkies is the right answer. We had these things called Little Debbies. <laughs> you know what Little Debbies are? They're like a Twinkie without the rich home-baked flavor. <laughs> what do these things cost? Like a million for a dollar? These things are so bad, every box has a picture of a little girl laughing at you. You know? you know, one little Debbie in the microwave on high for one minute will expand and feed the whole family. That's right. That's right. And it's called a Big Debra. Oh my. I'm a little over six feet tall, friends, okay? My inseam, 32. My waist, 36. I am one yard around, everybody. <laughs> 32 like this, 36 like that, means that I can roll faster than I can run. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting me a tattoo, okay? A little tattoo, I'm gonna put it right here in my belly. It's gonna say, if you can read this, don't feed me anymore. <laughs> Because I, I, I'm getting, now that I'm getting older, everything, like I'm anti-everything, I'm antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-coagulant. <laughs> Do I need any antiperspirant, everybody? Do you want to be one of the HBO guys, heavy body odor? <laughs> My friend called me, he said, hey, come on over, I have HBO. I said, well, that doesn't pair well with popcorn. But uh, another thing is I have really saggy eyes, as you can see. I have really, like a lot of flab on my eyes, a lot of eye flab. And you know you can get this taken off, you can. But then you go around looking surprised all the time if they take too much. Yeah. But there are some benefits to this. When it rains, I put a toothpick there. And I have a little awning for my eyes, see? Now I shouldn't pull on my eyes like this, seriously, because I have detached retinas. Well, they're not fully detached, they're emotionally unavailable. So that's... Uh... Crazy! So I'm on the eHarmony, everybody. And I think I've seen a couple of you on there as well, on the eHarmony. Here's the deal, okay? You gotta fill out this thing, it takes an hour and a half to fill it out to see if you're crazy or not before they let you play. I studied, okay, I got in, I got it, okay? So I passed. So I live in LA. 15 million singles, I only need one. I click, true story, no matches. I know. So I widen my horizons. I say, I'll go anywhere Southwest Airline flies in one stop. <laughs> Sometimes there's some good deals, right? So I click, no matches. I say, okay, I'm gonna lower my criteria. I say, I'll go anywhere in the world. I lower my criteria, I say, heavy facial hair, okay. <laughs> and now I have a cat. <laughs> True eHarmony story. One time I was matched with a woman who was in the Miss America contest, matched with me. Yeah, right? She didn't dig me, so that was a bummer. I was sad. I was sad. But a few weeks later, get this, it gets better. I got matched with a woman who was in the Miss Universe contest, matched with me. Woo! Yeah. And she didn't dig me either, okay? <laughs> But here's the cool thing. There's always something good out of every situation, right, friends? Always. I have now been rejected at the very highest level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who are you? Miss Kansas City? You don't want to go out with me? Well, too bad. I've been rejected by Miss Universe. You can't hurt me. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm trying. I'm a single guy. I'm trying. My last girlfriend, and if I'm lying, I'm dying. This is what she told me. She said, I can tell that you used to be good looking. <laughs> How do you respond to that, really? Well, if I still look like that, I wouldn't be dating you. Yeah? All right. I know, I know. So, so, 
after a show, this so rarely happens, this really pretty woman, great personality, she comes up to me, she says, you talked about being single in your act, you're really single? I said, yeah, yes, I, I really am. She says, well, would you, would you like to go out? I said, I'd love to. She said, great, here's my grandma's phone number. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. So that's where I'm at now, I, I'm dating grandmas, okay? <laughs> and it takes some getting used to, it does. I mean, you pull up to the retirement home, <laughs> you know, you gotta go through security, Grandkids are all there, grand, you know, her kids are there, they wanna see if you're good grandpa material. They throw you on, their, on your back, you know, to see if you give good piggyback rides. It's like, hey man, I think you crushed a vertebrae. Write that down, weak spine. I mean, but seriously, grandmas are the best. Who, who does not love their grandma? Aren't grandmas the best people on earth? They're the best. They're awesome. It's great dating grandmas. So you always get a good hug at the door. They have fresh cookies baked. You go to Applebee's, you get 20% off. They usually have a good parking place placard. It's awesome. Oh my, yeah, oh, they, I just love it. And, and, and you know, to spark the romance, you, you don't need to bring like a floral bouquet. You bring a tube of Bengay. <laughs> Crazy. All right, all right. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, sh uh. okay, okay. Okay, here we go. Yes, I'm a criminal, I'm an outlaw. And, okay, stick with me on this one. So not, okay. Stick with me the whole way. All right, I'm changing things up here. This is the greatest country on earth. Am I right? Yeah. Isn't it a privilege to live here? I just love being an American. This is completely nonpartisan. Don't, don't get tense when I'm gonna start saying what I'm gonna say. I think this is the land of opportunity. If you wanna work hard, you can succeed, right? Yeah. And here's the deal. There's people that want to come here from other places and want to work because they want to be productive members of society and provide for their families and loved ones, and I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with are people that already live here in this fantastic, wonderful land of opportunity. They already live here. They have that privilege, but they don't want to work, but they want to get a check every month for doing nothing. And I think I have that problem solved. I think we should start a border exchange program. <laughs> yeah. That's See, you got worried, didn't you there, friends? This is how we're gonna do it, too. We're gonna give everyone a Fitbit. <laughs> hey, you over there, let me check your Fitbit. The 30th of the month and you've only taken 28 steps and 10 of them were come to talk to me? You're trading with Stan from Sudan. <laughs> well, there's nothing to do in Sudan. Well, perfect place for you then. Get out of here. <laughs> Yay! You made it through that one. You made it through that one. Green New Deal. Okay, I don't know about that either. I'm not a political person, not a political comic. Don't want to be, all right? I do have a thing with litter. Are you ever in your car, somebody's eating an apple, and when they're done, they'll toss the core out the window? That's littering, isn't it, friends? Yes. Some people say it's biodegradable. And so is money. No one throws that out the window, right? <laughs> Unless you buy lottery tickets, right? Yeah. Other people say you could throw apple cores out the window because it gives the animals something to eat. So they can come down to the road for a nice, big, healthy snack <laughs> before they're squished by Winnebago. <laughs> Then they're biodegradable, aren't they, friends? Yes. Now, the most creative rationale for throwing an apple core out the window is it will plant seeds for other trees to grow. And of course, our highways are lined with apple trees. Yes. Right next to the cigarette bush. I feel so bad for smokers. I do, I feel bad, they're ostracized. I don't smoke, never did, but I think they should just build a place where only smokers could shop. We would call it the Paul Mall, okay? We'd have really good stores. We'd have the Gasp. We'd have the Soot Locker. We'd have Hackery Farms. Everything else you could get at Tarmart, okay? There'd be like a blue lighter special there or something like that. I talk about smoking because my grandma, my grandma Barella, she smoked so much that she was on oxygen her last three years of her life. And being the man that I am, one time I took her to the Colorado State Fair, you know, and being the man that I am, I, I, I carried her tank. Well, wouldn't you know, she was having a good time, but after about an hour, her tank was almost on empty. Well, 
I didn't want her to panic, so when she wasn't looking, I hooked her up to the balloon guy's tank. Yeah. So I tied her to my wrist with a string. I told everyone I won her at the shooting gallery. So, it's just a joke, friends, really. One time I told that joke after the show, this woman, she shot me with pepper spray. She was so offended, yeah. Well, it was my mom, but uh, that's her. Yeah. World Series at the time that we're doing this thing here, but I, 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 I like going to sporting games. It's just fun to talk to your friends, but I don't, the thing about baseball, though, that, that I don't like is that the managers wear the same uniforms as these world-class professional athletes. I just don't like that. You don't see it in other sports. I mean, you know, you see the swim coach come out there in his Speedos, do you? <laughs> and if you did, you'd call the cops, wouldn't you, friends, huh? <laughs> yes. Dudes, dudes. Do you ever think that word dude will catch on all over the world? <laughs> like you'd be in Italy, they'd call you doodlini. <laughs> they see you in Mexico, they say, hey, Medudo. <laughs> name any country I will attempt to name a dude from it. France, France le duder como tali dude. <laughs> Germany, dudermeister. <laughs> Russia, dudakoff or gorby dude. <laughs> Australia, kanger dude. <laughs> Korea, take one dude. <laughs> What's that? Africa, Africa voodoo. Right. There's some dudes in the Bible. What's the dude's favorite book of the Bible? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Okay. Who betrayed Jesus? Judas. <laughs> this one is difficult. Who did Jesus feed with only two fish and five loaves of bread? The multitudes, everybody. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. What would you call a dude from Canada, everybody? Dude from Canada. Very close, it'd be dude, eh? <laughs> they say A eh, after everything in Canada. You know why? This is how they named the country. These guys sat around a fire and they said, hey, we've got to name the country first thing in, by the first thing in the morning. What are we gonna do? They said, well. Let's get all the letters of the alphabet. We'll put them into the hat, draw them out one by one, whatever it spells, that'll be the name. So the first guy reaches in. C, A. <laughs> Next guy, N, A. <laughs> Next guy, D, A. That's why I don't see any Canadians on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> it's right there, everybody. So fun, you guys were awesome. I wish I had a big clothes. I wish I could sing or something to you. Because I, I, I'm just not musical. I was in the band in, in junior high. I was always a beat behind because instead of following the conductor's wand, I would follow the flab underneath his arm. <laughs> God bless you, my friends. You are awesome. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. And the money that they sent them to the bank should be going. <laughs>